So back to our top story, the series of rulings from the European Court of Human Rights uh, on religious discrimination in the workplace here in the UK. Joining me is today's winner, Nadia Aweda, a British Airways employee and the only one of four applicants uh, actually to be successful. Also here are Andrew Williams, director of the Christian Legal Centre and Andrew Copson, chief executive of the British uh, Humanist Society. And uh, Mr Aweda, if I could start with you, what does it actually mean to you that you uh, have now uh, won the right to wear a cross at work? Well, I'm, I'm very jubilant and pleased, and I'm very um, pleased that Christian rights have been vindicated both in the United Kingdom and Europe. Some people would say it was unnecessary to take it this far because BA, I understand, had already changed their policy to permit you to work yes, across. Yes, but the ethos of uh, the matter is that British Airways changed their policy under due press pressure from the public and MPs and bishops. I believe that the Archbishop of Canterbury threatened to take uh, Church of England money out of British Airways unless I was reinstated. So I was reinstated uh, because they lost a lot of money. They didn't reinstate me because they said we respect you as a Christian and you have a right to wear a cross. No, they changed their policy because they were losing a lot of money. And why do you want to wear a cross at work? Because I would like to make it known that I am a Christian, a silent witness to the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his crucifixion and resurrection, and his coming back again in glory. I would like to be respected. Um, so this is to communicate to other, the people you come into contact That's with right. your beliefs? Silent, silent contact, because I have colleagues that are uh, Muslims who wear a hijab. I have colleagues who are Muslims who do not wish to wear a hijab. So they have a freedom of choice. Either they wear it or they don't wear it. Everybody has their own right and faith and makeup to be able to express their faith in their, in their way and manner. So why, why should I be discriminated against uh, on par with other oh. colleagues? Andrew Copson, anything wrong with that? I don't have particularly strong feelings about, uh, about your case, actually, about, about this case in particular. I think there's one distinction to be made, for example, between a hijab and, and a cross, um, which you've just brought out, which is that in the case of uh, someone wearing a hijab, they're wearing it because they think that that's their religious duty to do so. Whereas in the, in the situation you've just outlined about wearing a cross, it's because you want to communicate a certain message to other people. But so equally that's not wearing but a I'm cross not... is making a statement as well, so isn't it? I don't think so. I mean, um, no, I don't think so. Not in the same way. Not wearing a cross is not saying, because many Christians don't wear crosses, but they're not saying by not wearing a cross, don't believe in Jesus, are they? Um, but I'm, I mean, this is a less interesting case to me than, than the other three um, that were lost, because I think the important principle that the court used, and which I very much support, and which I think most people support, is to say, look, if someone wants to manifest their religion, that's their right in a free democracy. And you don't have a problem and with that. And I don't have a problem with that. My problem is when that, that manifestation of your religion starts infringing the rights of other people. So in the case of a marriage counsellor who won't counsel gay people, in the case of a registrar who won't um, perform oh. civil partnerships, in the case of a nurse who won't wear a cross on a, on a lanyard or a pin but on a chain, wants to wear it on a chain and that gets in the way of her, her duties as a nurse. They're the case I think which are more, more important. Now if, if, if it's not harming anyone, I actually think that people should be allowed to I mean to those are quite significant course. defeats, aren't they? Uh, th those rulings in the European Court on, on that matter. Actually we've made some headway in these rulings, if you actually look at what's written in the, in the judgment, and so there is some good news. It's not absolutely awful for uh, the, the, the three cases that were lost, and indeed, at the Christian well, Legal Centre. No, but I mean, the principle has been established that you you can't put your principles above the service which you're employed to provide to the public. Well, I think th this is what's very important to understand about what's come out of Europe. This, first of all, they have said quite clearly that believing that marriage is between a man and a woman and, sec that, and that sexual expression should be within that construct is actually a religious belief. It flows from Christian faith. That the cross is a Christian symbol and that wearing well, the cross really is on Christian faith. They were really on what you can do in the no, workplace what was very and important, how you can imply your principles. What was very they? important, Adam, actually, in these cases, because we had not, this principle was being contested here in the United Kingdom in our, in our domestic courts. What was very important to win in terms of principle was this idea that believing that marriage is between a man and a woman and having a conscience about that was actually yeah, something but, that flowed from faith. That's a matter so, for you. The, the, the question is whether that should affect your duties as a worker. And so they? what the court then did was this. They said, this is a very important right. This is protected under Article 9. It is well, a, freedom a freedom of religion. thought, obviously. Freedom of yeah. thought, conscience and yeah. religion is protected. That's something that's very important. Now, we, now what, they did, what we wanted them to do was then make 
create a balancing exercise at the European level. Because what we found at the domestic level is that where there is yeah. a conflict of rights, the homosexual rights have trumped the Christian's rights. And in fact, what the, the European Court wanted to do, in a, in a sense, was just wash its hands of that. It wanted to say, we're going to throw it back to the domestic situation. We're going to say that there, there's a massive margin of appreciation. You know, the reality is this. If the, if the employer had accommodated Gary McFarlane, they would have agreed with that too, because they said it was all to do with the employer's discretion. Well, and that's what's concerning for us. How, how do you United feel about Kingdom. these rulings? The, uh, the, your colleagues, well, I, uh, I would like to address what you said. Muslims who wear hijabs wish to communicate also that they are Muslims because on occasions they would have they would fast and on occasions they would say sorry this is haram this is forbidden mm. so yes it is a form of communication to know that they are Muslims by wearing a hijab no 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 more than a Christian wishing to communicate that they are a Christian but, by wearing a but cross. But how do you feel about the rulings against on, on these case questions of homosexuality and others well, of people I, being able I, to apply their principles in their work? Well, I do, I do believe and I do, I'm a great supporter of, of, my, of the other applicants and I do encourage them to go to the European Court of Human Rights because everyone has a freedom of choice, in all honesty. Um, I wouldn't enforce my beliefs on anyone and if anyone doesn't wish me, like I want to get married if anyone doesn't have a blessing to say we no, wish but if you, you well. have a job to cater with someone I mean you you could I don't know working on an airplane say uh, I don't approve of uh, homosexual couples therefore I'm not going to give you a drink that, uh, that, that is okay? not that is not relevant because you're not exercising religious uh, rights or according to well, the you, Bible. You, isn't it the same of, of not providing them a service? Uh, it... It's not. It's absolutely not. That, that is something that's, that's, that's that, that sort Bible. of um, example or make, making that comparison is an extremely unfair one because we're talking about Christian conscience. Is, we're talking about the facilitating of a practice yeah. that is contrary to faith. This is certainly not about serving drinks. And let me say this, in, in all of our cases, in all of these cases, no homosexuals well, we've ever. Case, you know, no, we, no, we, no, we had the no, case, no, didn't we, of the people ever, running the bed and breakfast? They've for never example. been refused a service. They've never been refused a service. So, Lydia, right. in the Islington, and this was found as a fact, in, in, yep. even in our courts, that um, Islington could provide a, a first-class service in terms of civil partnerships. No same-sex couple yeah. was ever turned away. Same with Gary McFarlane. Okay. It was only a hypothetical situation. Okay. I, I, I'm going to be talking in a minute to Eric Pickles, the Secretary of State for Communities. Now, mm. he's making a speech today, and he's saying. Uh, in his view, uh, Alastair Campbell may cart, but we, namely the government, do do God, he says. Mm. Faith provides a clear moral compass and a call to action that benefits society as a whole. What do you think of that statement? Well, I think that his statement is pretty typical of the political wind that's been blowing around these cases. I mean, I see these cases as primarily political. They're lost again and again and again. They've been lost now for hopefully uh, the final time. And the principle has been established that one person's religious conscience, whatever that religious conscience may be, can't override the rights of others. The political case that people are trying to use these legal cases to build is to say, you know, Christians are being persecuted, Christians are being marginalised, and that is very obviously, to me, a front for actually trying to advance a very socially conservative, pro-religious agenda. So my concern is that when politicians like Eric Pickles weigh into these sorts of situations, often not knowing the facts of the case, it's a massive distraction um, from the legal issues at stake, and I wish he wouldn't do it. I mean, I, I've yet to find these aggressive secularists that he's always claiming are under, you know, the, the, the next role. And, and I run the British Humanist Association, so I should be expected to come into contact with at least some of them. Okay, I'm afraid we're going to leave it there, but I will be coming back to this with Eric Pickles. Thank you all very much. Okay.